today presentation is related to steel connections. And we will study particularly one uh, problem, only one problem. This is the last uh, class, the last um, presentation of this course. And it's a very easy one. We will just look one type of problems to show you how are the calculations of a steel connection using bolts. And we will calculate how many bolts we need to uh, have it. You will see that in some of these problems that are located in the chapter 15, you will have two connections with two elements. One element that is a beam. And after you have a secondary beam or flange that I will draw here in pink color, that is this one. And they are connected to the together using a element that is like an L connector. It's an element like this one that can be have holes in this side, <coughs> probably welded to the other material in this side. Well, the I beam will be connected to the flange in pink using this element. This element is connected, as you imagine, to the beam here and there using these three balls to the flange. <coughs> we can also see that when we have this connection, there are some formulas that are important. And all this information is in the chapter 15. I just upload part of the chapter 15 where there are some of the problems, but I advise you to go to the book and look at the full chapter 14 and 15 to try to understand all the information about this chapter. The formulas that we have here are several, but the most important is the shear in the bolt. When we have a bolt, this is the bolt, those are the treats of the bolts. We have the knock that is located in this area. If we have any material that we are connecting with this bolt, for example, piece A in red color, and please piece B in blue color, when we do the connect, this connection, we are creating a friction. Well, a friction. Well, I mean, we have one plate and we put the other plate next door here. And between them, we'll have like some kind of friction that will uh, create like those elements are put together and they cannot move. Well, to calculate the shear in that friction is a shear force that will be able to, will be the contrary of what we need to break it. Uh, it will be this formula, the one that we can use. Shear will be Fb equal to P divided by I. P is the force, A is the area. The beauty on the beam web will be, and I will explain what is that, 1.8 Fy, that is equal to P force divided by area. <coughs> If we can look that we have a beam and we connect with an angle and the bearing of the web will be the area of the ball that is in contact with that. Well, let's start with problem number 15.1. This is exactly the same problem of the book and this is the type of problem that we need to resolve. First, we have a beam that is connected with a flange. Okay, uh, this is a standard drawing. The beam can be smaller or bigger than the flange that depend on the condition. Normally the beam is bigger. In this case, by coincidence, and the book put a, a smaller number. Uh, we have a W16 by 26, and we have the flange that by coincidence is bigger, W18 by 20, that are connected to an angle. Angle is like an L element. And we need to, uh, understand what are the loads <coughs> that are like reactions, equal to the reactions, and the loads are 18K life and 6K dead. The steel grade, the type of steel is 50. The bolts 
are standard. The number of the balls is eight, 325 of three quarters of inches, that is 0.75 inches. And we need to design the connection. Well, we need to know how many balls we will have. First, we need to calculate the design load. The design load is the total load that is supported. And we have 18 plus six, but we will not put 18 to plus six together. We need to exaggerate those numbers. There is a security factor, a number that will make the number a little bit bigger. Well, the dead load needs to be multiplied by 1.6. And the, uh, sorry, the, be careful about this formula here. We will use here the dead load. This is correct, but this is life load. I did a mistake here. Okay. Well, 1.6 will be the life load. The life load is the people, the furniture is always bigger. And the debt is 1.2. We multiply 1.6 by 18, that is the life. Okay, this one. And we multiply 1.2 by six, and we have a total load of 36K. Okay, this is the first step. Second step, we will calculate the bearing of the web. What that means. For example, you have a bolt, and the bolt has an area where the bolt allow the support. For example, if this is the bolt, it's like a round element here, okay? And that round element obviously have a particular thickness that in this case is a radius, né? You have a radius, this radius and this radius, and we have here, the ball can be very long, but this is the thickness of the web. I mean, if we have a web ember and this ball is here, well, this area is the thickness of the web. This distance is the thickness. And the bearing of the web will be all this area. I mean, the radio of the ball that is the round element multiplied by the thickness of the web. That area will be the bearing of the web. Where we need to calculate how much that bearing of the web is able to support. <coughs> there is a formula for this. The formula is P that is the thickness of the ball, multiplied by a constant that is 1.8, multiplied by Fy, multiplied by P, that is the load, divided by the area. Well, we want to know how much is the area because as I explained you, we want the area that that ball is able to support. This is the area, this is the ball, the ball can be much longer, but only this distance of the ball is the one that is supporting the web element, this thickness that we have all. Well, we need the area. We take out from the formula the area. P, stay here. We take area into the other side of the equation. These two elements that were here pass to the inferior part. And we just need to resolve the formula. Area is equal to 36K multiplied by 0 0.75. That is the thickness of the bolts multiplied by 1.8. That is a constant always multiplied by the type of tilt that is 50 KSI. And it will be 0 0.53.33 square inches. You have the same problem in the book. I just rewrote it to make it easy to understand, but you can check in the book. Part number three, we calculate the bearing area per bolt. I mean, we have a bolt, as you can look here, and that bolt is supporting a specific bearing area. How much is the bearing area? I explained before, we have the thickness of the web, that is this area, and we have a particular uh, length of this material. Well, the bolt will touch the beam only in the 0 0.25 inches thickness of the beam. When we multiply 0 0.75, 
by 0 0.25, and we have this particular bearing area. Finally, we need to calculate the number of bolts. Here is where most students do mistakes, will be very careful about this explanation. We have from before the bearing of the web, 0 0.53, and we have here the bearing area for bolt, 0 0.188. We divide 0 0.533 by 0 0.188. Units are inches and inches. Therefore, inches, square inches, sorry, they disappear, and we have just two numbers. Well, the answer is 2.83 volts. But this is the trick. You cannot put 2.83 volts. You cannot take a volt, take 83% of the volt, and put inside of that bit. Well, 2.83 is equal to 3. The answer is 3 volts. Well, be careful. If your answer, by coincidence, when you do this operation, is 2.00001, this is bigger than 2. You cannot use 2 volts. You need to use 3. If your answer is 2.9, Nine, nine, this is less than three, you can use three. If it is 2.55, is three. If this 2.02 is three, is always the number that is up of the number of volts. Please don't write 2.83 volts in this answer because I will not accept decimals. Your answer will be grown. The number need to be exact. And this concludes this presentation. My best wishes to all of you.